So we see use cases coming from different sectors. It's gone beyond data center and it's uh, in a variety of places and carriers and it's also increasingly in enterprises. I was at three user group meetings in January and February, uh, very much populated by the enterprises. And they're looking at a variety of use cases and everyone has a different you know, sort of target use case for their enterprise. The growth in ONF, in NFE, in Open Daylight shows industry investment in this is massive in anticipation of a very strong market. Well, you know, it's really an exciting time to be in the networking industry. Um, you know, as we talk to customers, and we've had literally hundreds and hundreds of conversations with different customers, whether they be enterprises or service providers, they all have a kind of a different perspective on SDN and different use cases where they see that it may first apply. And so that's really why we've developed such a comprehensive strategy toward SDN. Service providers are, are figuring out how they can both converge their networks and deploy services and uh, more quickly to monetize their network. Enterprises are looking at the virtualized data center that has brought them so much agility from a compute and storage perspective and saying how does the network um, support that? Um, you know, I can I can spin up a virtual machine in, in a matter of, of minutes. I can spin up the, the compute and storage associated with that very quickly and the network takes weeks to deploy. That's not acceptable and, and, through, and the network is really constraining um, the full realization of the power of virtualization and so that's a key use case uh, and one that we see our solution both centralizing the management, having a hybrid controller and extracting the services from the network is really going to enable uh, enterprises to get the most out of their virtualized data center. SDN is starting to evolve as, as really the next generation of how networks will be run. It's about how applications will take advantage of your network, it's about automation of the network, it's about re reducing the expense in your network and getting that total cost of operations down. Today there's a lot of uptake in the space of device programmability. The vision of SDN is having your entire network programmable. You're starting to see that in places where the transport of the, the network is the most costly is where the most interest is and starting to see an awful lot of trials, a lot of EFTs. If you look across the vendor community, most everyone is in EFT with a small number of actual commercial sales and large deployments. That, I think, will change dramatically over the course of the next year. At Cisco, we're particularly interested in this because this is allowing us to upgrade our routers and switch software to enable that programmability and enable our vendors to go to a much lower cost operational model. It's a great opportunity as the network's evolving. We're in the very early days of SDN. What we're seeing right now is various consortia and standards organizations such as the ONF, Open Daylight, Etsy's, NFV, and others come together to try to define both the use cases, interfaces, and protocols that will be used um, to optimize and standardize networks of the future. Now this is not to say that hardware won't have a role to play. Hardware definitely has a role to play where in certain, um, in certain environments such as the network core or a high-touch edge. So the future is really a combination of both. A lot of functionality moving into software, as everything else, and a lot of functionality in hardware. So Infinera is primarily focused on transport SDN. And what that is, is taking SDN and the value that's been discovered inside the data center, extending it out to the WAN, and then taking it from the packet layer, layer two and above, down to the transport layer. And there's some real value in that, and it's, it's, it's in every conversation we're having with service providers today. As a proof point of the interest in, in, in Transport SDN, there's a new working group in the ONF that's been formed and recently blessed called the Optical Transport Working Group. So that's a good sign, and it's, it shows that both carriers and vendors are interested in moving this standard forward as quickly as possible. That said, um, carriers have very complicated networks. They're very heterogeneous. It will probably take a little bit longer to see SDN and Transport SDN roll out in service provider networks in significant ways versus more greenfield environments like the data center. Now looking forward, uh, I, th I think you're going to see a lot of those deployments and experimentation and you're going to hear more from Infinera as we continue to push forward in our innovation around Transport SDN. SDN has moved from you know, a hype to technology that people are trying and uh, investigating for future use. And what we see at Dell is SDN is about everything, you know, above and beyond networking. So it's about a software-defined storage, it's software-defined compute, a lot of the elements that make up a data center and an enterprise. So it's really SDE, software-defined, you know, everything. Uh, our approach to SDN is always one about migration. It's not 
a question of an open flow protocol or an overlay protocol that you know some of the competitors are pushing out but it is based on an open standard that we can migrate our customers from existing legacy infrastructure to the new SDN enabled networks and SDN enabled data centers and SDN enabled enterprise. 2013 is about taking SDN from hype to reality. SDN is a very broad and inclusive term. As a result, everyone has their own definition and interpretation of what SDN is. And they're all correct from their point of reference. We see at Nuage Networks SDN being enabler of cloud services. It allows for applications and network to come together in a way that applications can consume network resources very rapidly by providing applications of visibility and control that they so much need. And this is what the CIOs and enterprises care about. This is what creates the adoption in the cloud services because it's all about programmability and it's all about automation. And that's how, by bridging the gap between applications and network, you bring it together. You make the network not stand in the way anymore. You make it as consumable as compute has become. And once that happens, you made SDN real. SDN represents a new paradigm of networking. It started in a, as a research project at Stanford University and University of California, Berkeley. And so, so far we have more or less demonstrated the potential of SDN and it has captured the imagination of the industry. But because it represents a new paradigm, it, there is a lot of scope for building intellectual foundation of SDN. And in terms of building that intellectual foundation, there is a lot of opportunity for researchers to continue to explore what it means as a new paradigm. What are the new abstractions? What are the new programming paradigms? How do you partition the functionality between hardware and software? And how do you really manage uh, this whole uh, software-defined networks? SDN will continue to grow as a very important research topic. Now more and more researchers are starting to look at SDN as a uh, very interesting and intellectually challenging research topic and so for the next three to five years actually I see continued growth in academic research on different aspects of SDN. Of production deployments we have today, you know, uh, that we're done last year, it's still a relatively small number. At the same time we're seeing more and more uh, of the really visionary organizations adopting SDN and reaping great benefits. Uh, Bill Gates famously remarked that uh, many people tend to underestimate the impact of technology um, in, in the long term and overestimated in the short term. So I'm still convinced SDN will be a great revolution that will change every aspect of networking as we know it.